I haven't used my Raspberry Pi 4 in so long. I think I'm like three OS updates behind. I'm still on Buster. So let's get this thing upgraded to Bookworm and we're gonna do it right through the terminal. So we're gonna start by going into the terminal and type in sudo apt install rpi dash imager. Click enter and we have a whole bunch of errors. What the fuck are these? Looks like we got some package issues, no problem. Let's try updating them. So we'll do sudo apt dash get. We're gonna do update. And then we're also gonna do and and sudo apt dash get dash upgrade. We're gonna try and force this. Okay, it looks like we might have to do this the hard way and just brute force this through the SD card. Here's the Raspberry Pi website. We're gonna download Pi OS for Windows. Get the imager. We're just gonna throw it into our toss folder. There we go. Let's choose the device. So it's a Raspberry Pi 4. Choose the operating system. We want 64 bit bookworm and choose the storage. This might take a second to load. There we go. We got a 32 gig card. That is our Raspberry Pi card. Next, would you like to apply customization settings? Let's say edit settings, host name. Uh, no, this all looks fine. All existing data will be erased. Yes. While this isn't the best way you want to upgrade your OS, it is a way if you're getting all those errors like I was. Looks like our thing is done. Let's click continue and get this back in the Raspberry Pi. Okay, let's set up remote access on the Raspberry Pi. I just did a format yesterday. You got to reset up XRDP. We're going to start by doing sudo apt update. We're going to let that run. Next, we're going to run sudo apt install XRDP. Once this is done, the program should start on its own. Now, if you know the IP address of your computer, like I know mine, I can go to my Windows computer and hit connect on the remote desktop connection. And now there we go. Login screen, baby. Let's get it. The next step we're going to do is install Nginx and the RTMP module onto our Raspberry Pi. So that way we can set up a restreaming service in our house and not have to pay for an outside service. To do that, we're going to go into our terminal and type in sudo app install nginx let that run with nginx installed the next thing we need to do is install the rtmp module so to do that we're going to do sudo apt install lib nginx dash mod dash rtmp with that installed now we have to check to see if it's running so we're going to do sudo system ctl status nginx and we can see here now that it's running. Next thing to do is set up the configuration for our restreaming servers. Now we need to edit our Nginx config file. So we're in the Nginx folder. We're going to hit LS just to see what's here. Third column down, bottom one. You can see Nginx.conf. So we're going to type in sudo nano for our text editor, Nginx.conf. Now you see here a bunch of boilerplate stuff. We're going to keep events in this top boilerplate. We're going to get rid of the rest. With that out of the way, we're going to type in RTMP and a set of curly braces. We're going to type in server and a set of curly braces. So now you should have two sets. We're going to want to space this in a bit. Now under the server, we want to tell what port to listen to. So we're going to do listen on port 1935 semicolon. We're going to do chunk size of 4096. Now we want to do another one. So we're going to do application. And we're going to call this one live. You're going to put this inside of OBS where you put your stream key. And you're going to do another set of curly braces. And very basic, we're just going to do live will be on and record will be off. I'll put my config in the description box down below. And now when you go into OBS, all you do is put in live inside of where you'd put your stream key with the IP address and you are good to go. I'll show that in another video. Press control O to write out and you want to make sure that you save it. So make sure it's called nginx.conf and we're good. I'm having an issue with my nginx server. When I type in sudo system CTL status nginx and I click enter, we can see it says active failed and there's an issue with it. Now, there's a number of reasons why you can get this error. Most often, it's going to be something conflicting with the port or there's something in your configuration file. In this instance, we're going to check out and see what ChatGPT had to say. 
and it told us to run this command first, sudo nginx dash t, and it's gonna run the config file and it's gonna tell us if there's any errors while running the config file. And we can see here, user directive duplicate is in. So let's go into sudo nano, and we're gonna go into the config file. And yep, sure enough, we can see here that there are two users that I forgot to, to get rid of. So we're gonna get rid of the first one. So we're gonna do control shift K and just get rid of this and then control O to write out. And now we're gonna do sudo system CTL start nginx. And now we're gonna do sudo system CTL status nginx. And we can see now it's actively running. With the nginx server all actively running now, we can finally start streaming. So let's minimize out. I've got OBS on my main computer here. We're going to settings, going to stream. And you can see here, I have the RTMP, the address of my Raspberry Pi slash live, which was that application layer. And then I have a stream key. This is star killer. This is only active on my internal network. So it doesn't really matter. You can name this whatever you want. It does not matter at all. Star killer is the name of my computer. Now I'm going to hit start streaming. And you can see here it's connected and it's going out through the Raspberry Pi. Let's go to my server and we're going to add a new scene. And now we're going to add a new media source. And we're going to call this one star killer. And we're going to turn off local file. And for input, we're going to say RTMP colon slash slash 192.168.1.54 slash live slash star killer click okay and there we go i'm now capturing the output from my main computer onto my server and now if i hit start streaming on this one it'll go to all my twitch channels and my other rebroadcasting services that were listed in the configuration file